in-flight fires are a serious threat to airlines and airline safety. They can spread quickly without being noticed and threaten the lives of passengers and crew. Although most in-flight fires are minor and are easily extinguished, there's always the potential for catastrophe. In this video, we'll examine the dangers of in-flight fires, especially hidden fires. Hidden fires are the most threatening because they may go unnoticed by the crew due to their location on the aircraft. We'll also look at the many variables that may ignite or fuel a potential fire and show how taking aggressive and immediate action can save the lives of passengers and crew. Keep in mind that the information presented in this video does not replace your company's emergency procedures, but by drawing on crucial fire research from the FAA and other civil aviation organizations around the world, it may help you to more effectively handle in-flight fires. Fire research has resulted in a better understanding of several important issues when fighting fires. In-flight fires can be triggered in many ways. Often, these fires are caused by wiring or electrical component failures resulting in electrical arcing, short circuits, and overheated components. Fires due to electrical sources often take place out of sight behind cabin panels. In-flight entertainment consoles located in seat backs can also fail and become a source of ignition. Despite strict federal penalties, some passengers are still tempted to smoke in aircraft lavatories. Learning how to detect a fire as quickly as possible is the best line of defense. Our sense of smell is often a better indicator than electronic detectors. In many cases, a fire can be smelled before it is seen. Other clues that may indicate a hidden fire are abnormal operation, trip circuit breakers or areas of elevated temperature in the cabin. In some cases, the source of smoke may be more readily apparent, emanating from galley, lavatory, or in-flight entertainment components. In this situation, immediately remove electrical power to the component by pulling the associated circuit breakers if possible. All crew members should be familiar with extinguisher operation on board the aircraft. However, extinguishers may become exhausted in a large or inaccessible fire. Be prepared to improvise using beverages, wet blankets, and passenger assistance. A team approach is often an effective method. Here, the first cabin crew member to become aware of a fire acts as the primary firefighter. The initial response should be to alert other crew members, obtain the nearest fire extinguisher, and attempt to fight the fire. The second crew member to become aware of the fire should immediately make contact with the flight crew. We've got a fire in the aft cabin. Yeah, hold a five right and leave the passenger seat. The flight crew should be informed of the apparent location of the fire, its severity, and the actions being taken in a clear and concise manner. This crew member should maintain contact with the flight crew and keep them updated on the situation. A third crew member, if available, should act as the assistant firefighter and support the primary firefighter by supplying additional extinguishers and protective breathing equipment. He or she should help improve access to the fire by removing any obstructions and clearing away passengers. While every situation will vary, the team should use common sense along with immediate and decisive action. In case of fire or smoke on smaller aircraft with only one cabin crew member, that crew member should immediately notify the flight crew and then begin aggressive firefighting.
An especially dangerous situation involves fires that cannot easily be found. These fires can spread rapidly without anyone's knowledge. It may be necessary to force off panels or cut through them with the use of improvised tools or a crash axe. Use whatever implements are near, such as knives, spoons, or food tongs from the galley. Everyday items like knitting needles, walking canes, keys, scissors, or items from the first aid kit may prove helpful. Remember that the crash axe will not normally be available to cabin crew members due to the need to keep the flight deck door closed for security reasons and to prevent smoke entry. The severity of the situation will determine if the crash axe should be made available. Having prior knowledge of the aircraft and being familiar with your company's safety guidelines in handling unusual fire situations will be invaluable. It is critical to be resourceful and determined when fighting an in-flight fire. The best way to determine which panels to remove is to use the back of the hand to feel for excessive heat. The back of the hand is more sensitive to heat than the palm. Remember that some panels are quite warm normally. Being familiar with the aircraft is extremely important, so valuable time is not wasted. Aggressive and immediate action is the key to fighting fires. Acting quickly is the most important part in avoiding a potential catastrophe. Tell the flight deck, we've got smoke back here. Captain, there's smoke in the aft cabin. I don't know where it's coming from. I can't get this panel down, but it's hot. Give me keys or something quick. The smoke is coming from the ceiling. Rick is trying to get the panel off. Quickly evaluate if there is time to put on protective breathing equipment, also known as PBE. In some situations, it's more important to put the fire out quickly. However, if PBE is necessary, don't delay. Fires can spread rapidly and put the aircraft and crew in immediate danger. Expect some differences between training with PBE and using it in an actual emergency. In a real fire situation, the equipment will be more difficult to put on and it will be louder than expected. Flight attendants who have been involved in fire testing trials have described how quickly visibility was lost in a fire area due to smoke. Even small quantities of smoke can make it difficult to breathe if PBE is not used. It will be necessary to break the seal on the fire extinguisher before it will function. When using handheld extinguishers, remember that they should be discharged from an upright position if possible. Otherwise, all of the extinguishing agent will not be discharged. While there could be situations when it is not possible to keep the extinguisher upright, some are equipped with a discharge hose that allows the extinguisher to be kept upright while still enabling a downward or upward discharge. The above ceiling area is quite large on some wide body aircraft, so it may be necessary to use several extinguishers to fight the fire. On smaller planes, the above ceiling area can be very small. Access can be difficult due to the many ducts, wire bundles, control cables, and other aircraft components. Time is critical when dealing with an above ceiling fire. 
On the Swissair MD-11 accident in 1998 off the coast of eastern Canada, disaster struck swiftly. Only 20 minutes passed from the moment the first officer first detected a strange odor in the flight deck to the complete loss of the aircraft, passengers, and crew. In-flight fires resulting in aircraft loss are rare, but research shows that serious fires must be brought under control within minutes. Here at the FAA William J. Hughes Technical Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey, fire safety issues are constantly being examined. This research is invaluable, especially for the flight deck where a cabin fire poses additional concerns due to the necessity of maintaining tight security at all times. If a fire in the cabin is confirmed, it is important that company emergency procedures be followed immediately. Put on goggles and oxygen masks at the first sign of any smoke or fumes. Notify ATC and begin planning for an emergency landing as soon as possible. Delaying the descent by even a minute may be the difference between a safe landing and disaster. You smell something, Tim? I do, I do, Kate. We have smoke, we, smoke coming out from the panel behind your seat there. Let's go to if there's a fire on the flight deck, pilots should also follow company emergency procedures. Cabin crew should be notified of the situation at once so they can prepare for an emergency landing and evacuation. In the event of a cabin fire, extinguish the flames before smoke and fume elimination procedures are followed. Otherwise, the increased ventilation may worsen the situation and cause the fire to spread more rapidly. It's important to remember that smoke and fume elimination procedures are designed to clean the cabin of pollutants and are not intended to control fires. You should pay special attention to circuit breakers. Do not reset a trip circuit breaker in flight unless the procedure is approved in the flight crew's operating manual or unless the captain believes it's necessary for the safe completion of the flight. Circuit breakers are meant to protect against electrical overloads and should not be used as on-off switches for day-to-day -day operation. If a hidden fire becomes severe, you may see simultaneous indicators, such as multiple system failures and circuit breakers tripping in quick succession. Abnormal system operation may also be a sign of a developing fire. In the event that a fire becomes uncontainable, the aircraft should be landed immediately while control can still be maintained. Sidewall and floor panels are removed to show the typical materials located behind them. Remember, removing actual aircraft panels can be difficult and the attachment methods vary. Thermal acoustic insulation is located next to the aircraft skin and protects the cabin from the cold and noise outside. It's safe to pull it out of the way when searching for a fire. The cables behind the panels can be quite vulnerable and sparks may occur if the insulation is damaged. You'll also find a large amount of air ducting, some of which can run very hot during normal operation. Be aware that hydraulic fluid can leak at high pressure and look like smoke. The fluid is fire resistant but can burn under certain conditions. Fire research testing has led to reductions in the flammability of many aircraft materials. However, the flammable properties of some materials can be different in aircraft that have been in service over time. In some areas, lint and fluff can accumulate. In other areas, spills and maintenance activities can contaminate materials. Some of these contaminants may be flammable and can be minimized with routine cleanings. It's important to address the use of halon fire extinguishers and their associated side effects. While halon may cause some mild discomfort, such as dizziness, when used in a confined space, it is far safer than the risks posed by an uncontrolled fire. 
The toxic smoke and gases from a typical aircraft seat fire are far more serious than the health risks in discharging a halon fire extinguisher. In most cases, even if all the halon extinguishers were discharged on an aircraft, the typical concentration levels would still be below the maximum safety level defined by the FAA. In the future, new types of extinguishers will be approved to replace halon. Regulations will require that the new extinguishers be just as safe and effective as halon. While federal regulations have minimized the likelihood, some passengers are still tempted to smoke in aircraft lavatories and interfere with the smoke detectors. Stocked with flammable materials such as paper towels and tissues, the lavatory poses the potential for danger. This demonstration shows how a very large fire can erupt in a lavatory in a matter of seconds. Aggressive firefighting can bring this situation under control, so it's important to act quickly. If the source of the fire is visible, open the door slightly and discharge the extinguisher at the base of the fire with a sweeping side-to-side -side motion. In an enclosed space such as this, the halon extinguisher is highly effective. If the source of the fire is not obvious, open all the doors and cabinets to find visible flames and then use the extinguisher. Do not spray the extinguisher randomly throughout the lavatory. Remember, PBE might be needed in this situation. Another dangerous scenario is the ignition of spilled flammable liquid in the cabin. It's critical to bring this type of fire under control quickly to prevent it from spreading to adjacent cabin materials. Moving through the cabin may be difficult since passengers could block access while trying to escape the fire. Sometimes, relying on passengers to pass extinguishers where needed is the only option. A seat fire started with flammable liquid can be extinguished easily with a halon extinguisher. Although water extinguishers are not rated for flammable liquid fires, they will have some effectiveness when the liquid is spilled on an absorbent material, such as seat cushions or carpeting. Use the nearest available extinguisher and, if necessary, request a halon extinguisher from other crew members or passengers. Another possible fire hazard is the portable electronic equipment brought into the cabin by passengers. The batteries that power this equipment are a potential source for ignition. Fuel cells are increasingly powering this type of equipment and research will soon provide new information on the fire risks of these systems. Aerosol cans are permitted in the cabin, but they can also pose a fire risk. Many cans use flammable gases such as butane as propellants. The contents of the cans may also be flammable. Leaking aerosol cans, ignited by static electricity, have caused fires. As a member of the aircraft crew, you are the best defense against in-flight fires. Be vigilant in monitoring the cabin and pay particular attention to any unusual odors or the odd behavior of aircraft systems. It could help you in the early detection of a fire. By acting quickly and decisively, you can greatly improve the chances of controlling in-flight fires and save the lives of your passengers and crew.